All right, let's compare. So I have 75 hundredths. So because this ends in the hundredths place, my picture has to be cut up into a hundred pieces. So this is what the picture looks like. I'm also going to go ahead and tie in fractions just so you can see the connection. So it's 75 hundredths. So because I said hundredths, my fraction has to have a hundred underneath. And so then here is the other one. This is seven tenths. Seven tenths, because it ends in the tenths place, has to be cut into ten pieces. And so here's the picture for seven tenths. The fraction, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that other one again. So 75 hundredths, seven tenths. The fraction for that looks like, looks like that. So obviously we can't compare the fractions. We have to do the whole common, uh, least common multiple and stuff like that. But I just wanted you to see that that's what the fractions look like. So here's my picture, 7 tenths. Now if you put them right on top of each other, from here down it matches. But notice the 75 hundredths has 5 hundredths more. Okay, so remember I told you in my last video, when you're comparing, for comparison, comparison's sake, you're allowed to put like a little magic zero there to help you compare. So it's like saying I have seven tenths and zero hundredths. And that's what makes the difference right here. I have nothing here. I have no little hundredths to, uh, in that. But in this one, I do. I have five hundredths. So that's why 75 hundredths is more. And if you treat it like money, this is like 70 cents. Think of it as 70 cents and 75 cents. And so 70, 75 cents is greater. Okay, so let's look at another one. We have 90 hundredths. Even though there's a zero in the hundredths place, this is the way the number is given. You have to say 90 and then the, num the, the place value, the last digits in. So 90 hundredths. So my picture will have 100 pieces and 90 out of 100 will be shaded in. So that's what the picture looks like. My next number that I want to compare with is 9 tenths. Because it stops in the tenths place and there's nothing here, I have to treat it like it's like there's there's no hundreds place so nine tenths so my picture will have ten pieces and look like this now what do you notice here even though one is in tenths and one is in the hundreds place they are exactly the same amount shaded in okay you need to think of it as like there are ten things to color and they both colored up to nine. And so it's equivalent. These two decimals are equivalent, even though one is in the hundreds place and one's in the tenths place. Remember, I told you, when you're comparing, you're allowed to put these magic zeros there because you're just saying, hey, I have zero hundreds. And so they are exactly the same. And so you put an equal sign instead. The fraction for the first one is 9 tenths. Fraction for the second is 90 hundredths. Okay, let's, let me go ahead and address something that I need to talk about so you don't get confused. This is 90 hundredths, and then this is 9 hundredths. These are very, very different decimals. <clears throat> This is obviously still that. I don't know if I have um, a visual that shows nine hundredths. I'm just going to take a ten hundredths and uh, cross that out. So just you know, pretend that doesn't exist. Look at the difference. That's nine out of a hundred shaded in. That's ninety out of a hundred shaded in. So a lot of students, like, they just see the 9 and they think, oh, it's exactly the same. But you know what? When you line it up and treat it like money, you'll notice, oh, that's 9 cents. That's 90 cents. Well, 90 cents is way more than 9 cents. So be aware of the place value.
and definitely look at the pictures. If it ends in the hundreds place, your picture has to have a hundred. If it ends in the tens place, your picture has ten, ten pieces. Okay, I wanted to address something real quick before you do your checkpoint questions. I just took three decimals in different place values and different pictures so you can see the difference between all of them. So when you read this, this ends in the hundredths place, so it's one hundredth, which means my picture has to have a hundred pieces and one out of a hundred is shaded in because it's one hundredth. So my fraction would be one over a hundred. Look at this one. This only is in the tenths place, so that's one tenth, which means my picture needs to have ten pieces and one out of ten is shaded in. And so my fraction will be one over ten. Notice one tenth is greater than one hundredth. Okay, remember we talked about that magic zero right there. So it's like ten cents versus one cent. Or think of it like a coloring contest. This is colored more than that one. So one tenth is greater than one hundredth. And then this one ends in the hundredths place. So I have to say ten hundredths, which means my picture is, because I'm finishing in the hundredths place, my picture has to be a hundred pieces and ten out of a hundred are shaded in. So then my fraction will be 10 over 100. And these two are equivalent. These two are equivalent. And then these two are greater than that one. So really be careful and pay attention to the decimals. I'm going to write all of them right here so you can see. And then I'm going to put like a little dotted magic zero right there. So one cent is less than one-tenth, and one cent is also less than ten hundredths. Okay, I want you to do these four questions before I move on and do comparing and ordering, or sorry, ordering. So I want you to write the symbol in the middle, and as evidence, I want you to draw um, sticks and X's as visuals for each decimal. Press pause, work the problems, press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so let's look at each one. 42 hundredths, because that ends in the hundredths place. So we're going to just pretend each stick has 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 2 hundredths. And then this is 4 tenths, so 10, 20, 30, 40, or 1, 2, 3, 4 tenths. So this one clearly has more than that one. And remember, we can do the magic zero, 42 cents, and 40 cents. This one is greater. So six hundredths, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then six tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six. whoops, five, six. Sorry, let's just do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six tenths is more than six hundredths. All right, since I'm getting used to this, I can put a zero here and know that these are equal, one, two, three, four, five, and then, you know, 50 of these, which would make five rows, so that's equal. And then eight tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then 81 hundredths. So imagine these are all filled with X's. I can't make 81 X's like that. That's going to take forever. So this is barely larger than this one. If you think about it, it's like 80 cents versus 81 cents. So that one is greater. Okay, now we're going to be ordering decimals. And it's really the exact same process. Uh, look at the visual. Make sure it matches up. Draw visuals to help you and then just put them in order and make sure you put them on top of each other and put zeros where necessary. So let's look at the first one, 62 hundredths. So there is my visual for that. The next one is 6 tenths. There's my visual for that. And then the last one is 65 hundredths. There's my visual for that. Now it's kind of hard to tell so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them right above each other and then you can see which one is colored in more. So looking at this, this one is colored in the least because this one has a whole line longer 
or a whole line extra, and this has a little bit extra. So this is the least. And then looking at this one, this one has two pieces here, and this one has five. So then this would be next, and then this one would be next. So there's, so there's that. So this would be first as least, then this, then this. Now, we do need to get used to not using visuals or sometimes it can get confusing. So always remember, you can complete this ex exact same question by listing them like this. And then just put your magic zeros in and know that the first is the same and then you go to the next and notice that this one is the smallest of the three so that would be first that's the next smallest and then that's the next smallest it's just like comparing and ordering whole numbers if you saw my video up about that I always tell you start with the greatest highest place value and in this situation it would be the tenths because tenths is greater than hundreds, so you always start on the left. And so then, you know, it's just like treating it like whole numbers. That would be first, that would be second, that would be third. Or treat it like money. 62 cents, 60 cents, or 65 cents. Okay, let's look at least to greatest with something in the ones place. Now, at the very beginning of uh, part one of my video, I said that um, the ones place is like one of these because we are using that original ones block like if it was whole numbers then this would be the ones place like this would be a ones block but because we're going into decimals and decimals are slowly getting, like, they get smaller. They're smaller than a whole number. We have to replace this with this as, like, one whole. And we treat it like a dollar. We think of it as a dollar because a hundred of these make a dollar. And so this is the perfect representation for one whole. So when you're using visuals... Here's what it would look like. So let's look at one and three tenths. So here's one whole and three tenths. That's how you read it. The other one was one and three hundredths. Because it's three hundredths, I have to use the hundredths block. So one and three hundredths. And then the last one was one and thirty-three hundredths. So it's this and then ten 20, 30, 31, 32, 33. Okay, so looking at this, you can see that this has the least amount of blocks. This is like one dollar and three pennies. One and three hundred, so this is the least. Then between these two, they both have one, they both have three, but this has three hundredths more than this one. So then when I order these, these in order, it's this one first, then this one, remember my magic zero, and then this one. And I said this one, based on pictures, has three hundredths more than that one. So we can always subtract just to quickly see. And you put zeros when you have to subtract if there's an empty spot. You get, whoops, you get three hundreds. So that difference is what made one greater than the other. And by the way, I just I forgot to share in the other clips is like if you have this you can put a zero there if you want. They both are exactly the same thing. In here you're just saying I have zero ones. And so it's just an extra an extra thing. It doesn't it it won't affect anything. They're both equal.